the other comic book thing is the Joker movie. Uh, I guess that's stirring up some controversy. The Joker movie is stirring up, stirring up some major controversy um, in the violence that's being depicted in that movie. Which, come on, like, there's fucking violence depicted in every, in so many fucking movies. You know, you're, are you like you're not going to make a, a complaint about the Rambo movie is creating violence, like you know? And I get it. Some of the people in, that are are from the families uh, the, of the Aurora victims, and they have a good reason to come out and say, "Hey, what are we going to do about the violence that's being depicted in this movie?" Uh, you know, like is the studio doing something to uh, address gun violence and you know societal mental health concerns and so on and so forth. Um, and I believe my friend uh, Vincent Didiano is going to talk about this on his show, P.O. Vincent. So check that out. Go like P.O. Vincent. Um, he's going to do his take on it. Um, and I don't want to overly step on his toes. But I will say that I, I feel like those families uh, have a good, good reason for bringing that up for the studio. And the studio has said that they have put their money into, uh, you know, uh, certain gun advocacy legislation and all that kind of stuff. Right? Like gun reform le legislation. Um, safety and stuff like that. Uh, the one that I, I think was fascinating to me is that the FBI and the American military have gotten involved in this movie, like, in the release of this film. By the way, the movie hasn't even fucking come out yet. The movie doesn't come out until October 4th. Uh, so, like, they're just sort of... It feels like, it feels like this, is, this is bandwagoning to me um, a little bit. But uh, basically, the FBI has identified some incels or incel communities that have talked about the Joker movie and how excited they are for it or something. Uh, and look, here's the thing. There, I, I did a podcast uh, where I criticized Invisibilia's End of Empathy uh, episode because it was talking about incels and empathy and like who deserves empathy and all that kind of shit. But in that in that episode, I did talk about the mischaracterization of incels in some mainstream outlets, and that's exactly what's happening here. Are there incels? We should all, let's clarify what incels are: uh, involuntary celibates, right? They are men who f who who can't uh, get women or and and blame women for that or blame external factors for that instead of saying, okay, what is it about me? Uh, that isn't working. What can I do to be a better person, right? Um, so, involuntary celibates. That's what they're called. Uh, and I know some of these people, right? I know some people that uh, look at look at themselves and say, uh, I don't understand why women don't like me. I don't understand why I can't get into a relationship. And is it this? Is it that? Is it, you know, am I too ugly? Am I too f this? Am I too that? Um, and, and it's tough. That's a very tough, tough way to look at it. And, and there are people... You know, maybe it's the type of women that they're going after. I'm not really sure, but uh, and there is a there is a, a tendency that there are some women that don't go after nice guys. Uh, and 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 you know, when when you internalize that pain, it can turn into anger, and that anger can start getting externalized and 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 and, uh, and start blaming women, and they get misogynistic, and some of them do get violent. I'm not going to deny that some of them don't, but that's not all of them. All of them, I think, are just venting because they don't know what to do with those emotions. A lot of humans uh, are, are people that uh, don't know what to do with their emotions. You know, that's a lot of human society. Um, but, you know, we mischaracterize these people as incels. So if you end up being this uh, person that can't get women or is struggling with finding stable relationships oh you're an incel and you're dangerous to the people no I, I think a lot of them just need help uh, a lot of them need to figure out self-worth a lot of them need to take time for um, working out who they are um, that's really important and uh, and and you know the FBI characterizing them and then connecting their whole community to this movie just seems so unfair and shitty uh, and then the military is telling theaters to like basically run active shooter drills um, and you know uh, uh, you run hide fight is the is the three things that, that you're supposed to do and and it's like this is for their safety and they're talking about like there might be a theater that has uh, particular threats 
thrown out against it. And it's like, what theater? Are you contacting these theaters? Like, get a hold of them, you know? get Find out who these theaters are. Why are you not doing that? And I hope they are. I hope that's what is going on there. Um, I hope they are getting in touch with these theaters and being like, hey, it seems like you might be the target of XYZ attack. You should take extra precautions, so on and so forth. My wife and I were talking about this earlier today when she went to see the South Park movie. Uh, there were, like, cops because they were talking about, like, it's affecting the fabric of American cinema or whatever the fuck. And it was, like, an NC-17 movie or whatever. It's like, you, you gotta, you just gotta take precautions if, if you, if you know of some threats. I feel like that's what's responsible. And what the fuck is the American military doing getting involved in, like, a movie that hasn't even been released yet? You know, don't they have some other country's oil to go steal? Like, isn't that something that you, you need to do? Why are you wasting your, why, why are you getting involved in this shit? This doesn't make any sense to me. So... You know, what it, what it's ignoring, though, to me, is the true mental health issue. Uh, and and the, if you've seen the previews of The Joker, you've seen that the character of Arthur, uh, played by Joaquin Phoenix, uh, addresses some mental health concerns. Um, and, uh, and, you know, so the movie does surround, like, mental health concerns leading into the Joker and and yeah some, some of it's like okay it's portraying the worst part of the mental health uh, concern but you know part of it is also like that's sort of the Joker character the Joker character is like bad mental health practices plus nihilism and chaos for the sake of chaos essentially right um, but ignoring the real mental health concerns surrounding the community of incels is not really helping anyone it's creating more of it. Uh, calling all incels crazy misogynists and, and, and isolating them further and pushing them deeper into the society and deeper into into feelings of inadequacy and hatred and all that kind of stuff isn't really helping. We shouldn't be doing that. Uh, you know, part of it is also there. There is this projected idea of the of the strong man that dudes can't feel vulnerable and and they they're. They're made to feel ashamed if they if they have vulnerable uh, ideologies and thoughts and feelings and moments and all that other stuff, and if they feel that sort of feel feel that particular way, uh, that they're not they're not man enough or something like that, and, and they're and they're attacked for it, and um, you know that's a real shame. I think uh, I think we should be addressing those aspects of society because. That level of hypermasculinity can create a problem like the incel community. Um, it can't. I don't know if that is the defining factor behind it, but I think it's part of it. I don't know. I'm gonna go see the Joker. <laughs> I'm gonna go see that movie. I'm gonna enjoy. I'm probably gonna enjoy it. It seems good. I'm, I'm I, like I'm, I've been waiting for a really good DC movie for a while, and this. DC Black Label shit seems like they might do some interesting stuff. Cool. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian, and uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.